The Grow My Cleaning Company podcast helps owners of cleaning companies just like you to grow your company and yourself so you can make more money and finally get the time and money freedom that probably got you into this business. Discover how to automate and create systems that allow you to grow like crazy without losing control. If you dig the show and want to show some love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. It really helps. Enjoy the show. Hey, Clean Nation, Mike Campion here, back with Jackson Pinky Pinkowski, probably my favorite staff or team member's uh, name to say, especially when I can say Pinky Pinkowski. So um, for those of you that are keeping track, we just did our last podcast, I don't say extemporaneously, but we kind of had a topic that we thought would be fun, and um, we both had hard outs, and I, I don't think we, I don't want to say got to the bottom of it, but I, there's so much that we didn't cover that I wanted to. So we are doing part two. Welcome back. If you haven't checked out part one, I would. If you have, good job. Let's let's party. So um, quick overview. And the, part of the fun thing is this is Jackson is not, this is not his thing. It was just kind of a conversation we we're having offline and we thought it would be interesting to invite you guys. So we do. So we're talking money. Um, we've done over 700 podcasts at this point and all of them in some way or another, I think are how to make more money with your cleaning company, both gross sales, net profit, so on and so forth. I don't know that we've done a single one, or if we have, it's been very few on how to keep your money <laughs> and the difference between making and keeping. And as I get older, I'm 47, 48, I don't know, something like that, almost 50. Um, and I've had, I've started to realize the difference between net worth and income. And kind of when you're younger, um, most young men, and Jackson, you have to tell me if, if you're in this category or not when we all, to some degree, uh, if we're not independently wealthy, trade our time for money, right? If we'd like to live indoors or have food or whatever, we need money. Typically that means trading time for money, which is fine. Um, and most young men, I think if they could trade more time for more money, they would do so. Um, as I've gotten older and I've see, seen wealthy older people, we are less willing to trade our time for money because you know they say a young man would trade his life for all the money in the world sometimes, but old men would trade all of their money <laughs> for just a couple more years or to be young again. So um, one of the things I want to talk about was, and Jack, do you mind sharing how old you are, Jackson? Because I think you're at a different stage of life than I am. Yeah, I turn, uh, well, I'm 26 now. I turn 27 in March. That's how that works. Yeah. What Are you March 11th? Have we talked about this? Yeah, right? yeah. We, 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 yeah, share we have the same birthday. birthday. Yeah. yeah I thought, I'm like, that sounds vaguely familiar. All right. So if you guys want to send presents, um, send them to Jackson. He's still young and needs crap. So send him a bunch of, send me love, send him, you know, silverware and gold. Um, so 26, perfect. Um, just not quite double that, but different stage in life. So I think as young, as business owners, a lot of times we focus a lot on gross revenue, right? Gross revenue. If I just had a million dollar business, then I'd be rich. And unfortunately, I've known some very profitable $600,000 businesses and some very unprofitable or, or losing multi-million dollar businesses. So I think we we focus on the wrong thing with the vanity number, which is gross sales. And I think it's more vanity for ourselves, like especially in the cleaning business, like, oh, we're just a cleaner. We don't have a real business. We're not big and fancy like everyone else. We kind of think if we had a million dollar business, then we'd be big and fancy. Unfortunately, on the other side of a million dollars, it feels exactly like 990 or 660 or whatever the case may be. But so oftentimes we stand in front of a steamroller, pick up a nickel, right? We're like, we just gross revenue, gross revenue, gross revenue. It's like, are you making any more profit? I don't know, or maybe not. I'm working harder. <laughs> we have more gross revenue, so I feel more important. But at the end of the day, I'm not making any more. So that's kind of the young man's mistake. The older man's mistake is keeping focusing on income and not focusing on net worth. So hopefully, even when you do build a million or multi-million dollar business and you're making hundreds of thousands of dollars, you'll find, say you make $200,000 a year, which I think a lot of people think, man, that's a lot of money. I'd be rich. Um, well, unfortunately in the United States and Canada and probably anywhere you're listening, um, you don't get to keep $200,000 a year on a good, on a good year. You might, you might keep 130, 120, let's call it 120, 10 grand a month. So you gotta make 200 grand a year to keep 10 grand a month. Now let's say just for kicks, um, your rents a couple grand, you got thousand dollars in car payments or whatever, thousand bucks in health insurance. If you got a family, you know, wife, kids, all that sort of stuff. Um, what are we at? Two, three, four grand, call it five grand, right? Say, God forbid we eat out or go on a vacation. So now we got, now we got five grand a month um, or that's 60 grand a year in cost. So off the 120, we get to keep 60. Well, if you're 50 and you only got 10 or 20 years to work, maybe on a good day, that's $600,000. Uh, if you only have 10 years, I'm 1.2 million. If you, uh, if you have more, 
still not that much, right? And unfortunately, uh, we're recording this early 2022. Um, the government printed the American government, which is the currency, the base currency for all the world. So we print a bunch of money, it has a big deal. They printed 25% of all the money that's been printed in the history of our, of our printing in like 10 months uh, during COVID. So that means on top of that, inflation kicks in. So right now, I think the official numbers are 7%. Um, part of the way they do that is they pick certain buckets of things that don't go up very much, like technology, because it gets so much faster, it goes quicker. Um, but if you pick a regular bucket on things like cars or houses, <laughs> crap, people actually buy day-to-day -day gasoline, um, it's substantially higher. Um, so if you figure 15% inflation, that means every five years, your money gets cut in half. So even if, even if you made $200,000 a year, and even if you kept 120, and even if you kept 60 after that, we're super, and it's hard, by the way, you're making 200 grand a year, you only live on five grand a month. That's hard. Most people I know that make 200 grand a year live on 250 grand a year, <laughs> going to debt. So even if you do all this stuff, you still only got 60 grand a year to invest. But if that goes away half every five years, you just, you can't keep up. So I, I know that kind of paints a bleak picture and I'm, I'm dying to get Jackson's thoughts because uh, he and I did not talk about this beforehand, but I, I love having someone that's more in your shoes, give his thoughts, questions, perspectives, concerns. But that's why it's so important that we talk about keeping money and spend some time and focus and effort on keeping money as opposed to um, making it. And by the way, we talk about that 15% inflation, like, well, I'll put it in a savings account. God bless you for your percent and a half, right? And you can put in the stock market, which might make 15%. That's kind of risky, right? The 15% inflation is kind of guaranteed. Stuff's going to get more expensive. For those of you who are like, I don't know about this guarantee. Go Google price of a gallon of milk in 1957. <laughs> price of, you know, your parents bought their home in 1957 for $17,000 and were freaked the heck out about their $196 mortgage payment they were never going to make. And that same house today is renting for $2,000 and going for $700,000. So for those of you that are like, I don't know about that inflation, live for a couple decades or Google that crap and go, hmm, I guess that is the case, isn't it? All right, Jackson, I just dumped a crap ton. Uh, you are going to be the voice of Cleaning Nation who has probably got questions, concerns, shake fists. <laughs> what are you thinking and feeling right now that we can talk about? Um, I don't know. I, I guess... I feel like an old soul because I'm only, yeah, I'm only 26, but I always joke with my wife because I have like, I don't know, maybe a hundred dollars in my savings account um, because it doesn't do anything. And it's funny because in my bank account, I can rename what my account names are. So I name them so they're convenient. And uh, the savings account is like, it's named useless savings account because it really is just created. So I don't have to pay a fee every month on my checking account because it doesn't, I've had it my entire life, my entire adult life. Well, not even more so. I've probably had it since I was 13. And uh, the total interest I've gained on that is maybe like 13 cents. <laughs> um, and there were times where it had a lot of money in it and it's probably given me, you know, 15 cents maybe on sometimes. But, um, but I always joke with my wife because she's like, oh, we got to put money in savings. I'm like, why do you just put your money in the savings? Because it doesn't do anything. It's going to sit there and you end up losing it. Um, not to say, but then the big question is, what do you do with your money? Like, there are so many that you could, you could toss, toss a stone out there and, and hit anybody claiming they have the next best thing to a savings account. You know, is that a CD? Is that crypto? Is that NFTs? Is that just buying property? Is that turning property? What, what do you do with all your your money. I mean, even if you, you don't have a lot, it's still that issue of, well, Uncle Sam's going to come knocking, whether it be interest or taxes, and he's going to get his, his due. So, And by knocking, we mean kicking down the door with a you know, automatic weapon. <laughs> he I doesn't mean, ask I mean, nicely. He just takes it before you even get it. <laughs> basically, I, I've, it's what, what's the date today? Today's the 19th, recording this on the 19th. I've gotten three letters from the state government here asking me to pay my unemployment insurance for my company of me. It's me. <laughs> it's so funny when you want a service from the government, like a driver's license or a police, no offense. I love our, our boys in blue. Um, but the policeman to come, you know, investigate your stolen laptop, things seem to move super, super slow. 
But when it comes to a speeding ticket or you owe us some money, they're, they're lightning quick, baby. They're on it. And again, please don't hear me knocking the police. I love the police. It's, it's not the individual policemen, but the way they have it set up is, is not ideal for our, our system. I'm guessing if I was a cop, I wouldn't love doing speeding tickets. I'd want to help save laptops, but that's, that's not the job description is my guess. Um, okay. So a couple of things that are really important that you said, Jackson. First of all, I want to encourage Cleaning Nation because it is... I don't want to get kind of on a political ramp, but I do want to give you guys service. And by the way, I should completely say I'm not an investment advisor at all. I'm not qualified for that. Like when Jackson said, you can you know swing a dead cat and hit somebody telling you what to buy. Um, that ain't me. I'm not qualified. I've made a lot of money. I've invested a lot of money. I've done pretty well. Um, I've lost some money. So please don't take any of this as investment advice. I have no investment advice to give you. Call a professional, right? I can, I'm can. i really good at coaching how to grow a cleaning company. This is really just me seeing a need for the community and sharing my experience. So please hear this as my experience and Jackson's experience, not you should go buy this or not buy that because I'm not qualified. That said, it does break my heart because I see what Jackson's wife her mindset is a really healthy mindset. We need to save for later. We're young and strong and we can work now, but we don't know how long young and strong we're going to be. And we need to save for later. Throughout history and time, that has been a really effective common sense. Like man, my grandma told me that. Yes, yeah, she was right. But that's assuming the game isn't rigged. From my perspective, and you guys can do your own research. Um, I shouldn't say from my perspective. The reality is for the last hundred years in America, pretty much globally, but we'll use America, there has been inflation, right? Like the, the, no one's going to debate that. You might debate me on how much that's, we could all have a different opinion on that. But again, going back to 1900, <laughs> pick any piece of land, anything, it just, it costs more now. The exception would be technology. Um, you know, an Apple computer back in 1986 might've been $2,000 and have a billionth of the computing power. One cost now that's $2,000, but that's technology it has nothing to do with inflation. If you look at cars and gasoline and eggs and even eggs might get cheaper. But if you want a real egg, the one that you would buy in 1986, that's not, you know, this machine of whatever, just like a live chicken without a bunch of hormones laying an egg and then selling it to you, that costs six bucks. That has gone up, right? So food, you know, well, yeah, if you'd like a gallon of Coke or, you know, not to diminish any name, but sugar water, Sure, you can get that for a nickel, but if you'd like something that's an actual piece of food that you can eat and digest, it's good for you. Inflation has gone up. So I think we'd all agree generally things are across the board other than that technology has fixed like the internet or technology, you know, things like that. Even phones, right? You know, the Nokia phones that used to be a thousand dollars. Now they're, <laughs> these iPhones ain't cheap, but we can all agree houses, cars, typically groceries, most stuff that hasn't been mass produced has gone way up. So I think everyone's kind of signed off and it's just fact that we have inflation, whether it's, you know, the five or six or 7% of government's claiming or the 15% the I believe is true really depends on what basket of goods you're talking about, right? If I want to buy cheap garbage from China, there's probably no inflation. Same cheap dollar army guy I had now was be a dollar 10 years ago, it might be a dollar from now. But if I want to buy a house or a car, or, you know, anything that people want, um, typically it's more expensive. So well, you, that said- You know, you know Mike, ahead. too- with with the whole grocery thing, you talk about like, for example, Coke is basically cheap or the same price, right? But it's really just that price because it's subsidized by the government because we don't use sugar right. anymore, right? We use corn syrup. Corn syrup is farmers subsidized by the government, and that's that's totally fine. It helps them make a living, but it still is it it's still if it's an affected thing. It's it wouldn't be that price if the government didn't help, which in turn didn't increase the taxes, which in turn you know, didn't increase inflation or anything like that. So it is still a vicious cycle. Right. It's yeah, we there, I'm not, I just want to acknowledge there are some exceptions to yeah. inflation. Some things have gotten cheaper, but generally if we take the bag of goods that you would buy in a day-to-day -day, food, gasoline, electricity, the house to live in, a car to drive, these things generally when technology hasn't made it cheaper, which is great. God bless technology um, are far more expensive. Just look at houses, right? Technologically, they're kind of the same. The government kind of stays out of them, but at Minus the asbestos. What's that? No more, no more asbestos or lead paint. Minus right, that. yeah, they're, they're getting better, <laughs> but then, you know, like apparently that's cheaper to do it with lead paint because now they're they're way more expensive. So all that to say, the big thing I want to get at is that is what rigs the game. So the in inducement to save is really healthy, right? For a society, societies that save more instead of spend, delayed gratification. They do studies on children where. They'll come in and be like, here's a marshmallow I'm going to put on the table and I'm going to leave and I'll come back in five or 10 minutes. And when I come back, I'm going to put four more marshmallows on there. 
if you didn't eat the first one, you get five marshmallows in five minutes. But if you eat the first marshmallow, that's, that will be all the marshmallows. Um, some kids of course eat the marshmallow right away. That would be my son. <laughs> some, some kids wait for the, the five marshmallows. They follow those children in studies and that one trait, the ability to delay gratification had a massive impact on the success of those kids. The kids that ate the marshmallow now, um, did poorly in lots of things, relationally, financially, in lots of different areas, not just money in areas of life, the, the, the children that were able to delay gratification had a lot of benefit. So that is a skill that as a society, we, we really want to in, in, encourage. And just as a common sense for our kid, if you ask, which kid would you want? If you could pick or choose or train your kid up, of course, we want the kid that's like, I'll take five marshmallows in five minutes and one marshmallow now, like it's a common sense thing. Unfortunately, the society as we have it set up, you can blame the government, you can blame marketers, which we are, you can blame a lot of things, but um, it is set to spend, 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 consume, 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 like whatever you got, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, which is not good for society. Unfortunately, because of inflation, you are almost pressured into spending, right? Jackson got it. So your wife, if I don't want to say the game isn't rigged, but if the game wasn't manipulated by governance, and again, the fact that they can print money is what does this, by the way, right? If you can... If, if I could wave a wand and there was 10,000 more houses in Jackson's area, his house value would go to nothing. We all get that, right? It's valuable because there's this many people that want houses and about this many people that have houses and it goes, right? When the account, the big real estate bust ran up, more people wanted houses because money was so cheap, they couldn't produce them enough. So the price was skyrocketed, right? And then when the it collapsed and people couldn't get money cheap anymore, less people wanted houses, but there was the same amount of houses. So we all understand if you take any asset and, five exit, 10 exit, hundred exit, it becomes worthless, right? Like iPhones are valuable because they can only produce so much. If there was 6 billion people and 20 billion iPhones in the world, they'd be worth a nickel, right? Because everyone wanted to have three and who needs three iPhones? Um, so the problem with this inflation is we are meant to consume, 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 which is not good for us as a society, but because things are going to be worth less in a year, like Jackson said, I've had, say I had that same hundred bucks for 20 years. And a savings account is now worth $106. Unfortunately, the buying power of that $106 is worth $50. <laughs> so you, you, it's insidious. And the problem is with taxes, the government's super cagey. For most of us, they take it out of our check before we get it, right? Like they always say, and I'm not trying to get political here, but generally, if you accept the idea that Democrats want more taxes and, and, and Republicans want less. The joke is everyone's a Democrat until they have their first paycheck. And go, Who's this food, a son of a bitch? Like, and then all of a sudden they're like, maybe I'm a Republican. I don't know. And again, I'm not trying to get political, but it's, it's funny how we can have ideals until we're like, Hey, half my check went, who's this food, a guy, who's this suit, a guy, who's this, whatever. And then Jackson's got him calling, going, we need our suit. you son of a guy? Um, so anyway, all that to say with tax, they, they tax, you know, half of it at the beginning. And then if every five years, you're going to lose another half based on inflation, which is an easy tax. Again, if just look at, at houses, if the reason houses go up is because there's a finite amount, we can only build so much. It takes actual time and money and labor to build it. And, but if, if we had some sort of technology, the houses were free, right? Then, and you could build a thousand of them instantly. And all of a sudden there was 10,000 Jackson's house and my house would be virtually worthless because someone else could just make another house. So we get that regularly, but when the government prints, you know, $3 trillion or, you know, like I said, in 10 months, 25% of all the money supply ever, we don't get like, wait a second, wouldn't the money supply be worth 25% less? So all that to say, I want you guys to kind of understand macroeconomics. The first big thing is tax. And we all understand it. And I'm not saying we should pay no taxes, by the way. Like I live, I just said, I love the police officers. Those calls, those cost taxes. I like the fact that we have a military. Like I'm, I'm not anti-taxes. Don't hear me say that. But, you know, when you get politicians going, you know, you pay 65% and that's not your fair share. You get a little pissy. <laughs> I think that is my fair share. <laughs> just saying half the people pay no tax. So um, anyway, so we all agree that there should be some sort of tax, but that can be high and you have to make sure you manage that. And then on top of that, if there's an inflation tax of 15% a year, well then gee, many Christmas, there's really not a, a lot of uh, keep to do that. So Jackson asked a question, how do I keep my money? So first we want to move. I want to get Jackson's answer first because his girlfriend is smart going, I'd like to save but she doesn't understand how the system works and how it's taking advantage of her. It really punishes her as a saver, right? She's got this hundred dollars that she saves and it could be a thousand or a million, doesn't matter. You put it in a savings account, it's worth, call that hundred dollars, 10, 20 years later is worth 110 bucks or something. But the buying power is worth 70. So you literally lost money, right? So Jackson, I love, and we haven't talked about this, that you were smart enough to go, wait a sec, that's no good. Where do you put your money? What do you, what is just a, and I don't, you don't need like, 
account numbers, but conceptually, you still are a saver. You still know, I don't want to consume everything I need now. I want to save some for later. What do you, how do you do that? Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely don't hate on, on savings or anything. Savings is huge. And just because well, my the concept wife, of savings is good, but the vehicle, you got to put it in a yeah. vehicle. The, the typical, the typical savings account is, is, is like dead in the water. Um, so typically, I mean, does the mattress count? I've got, I've got money under my mattress figuratively. That's um, just as bad as a savings account, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, that has actually been like my new year resolution this year to get a lot better with it. Cause it's not like I've been bad in the past, but it's just kind of one of those things that I let, I keep pushing off and you sit on it and you have that mindset of, Oh, this is happening. And you know, like it's so overwhelming. So instead of just actually working on it, I bury my head like an ostrich or something like that. So, um, you know, this year if it's, it's in the past, what I've mainly done was like, I would put my money in a CD or like an IRA or a 401k stuff, stuff like that, or a diversified investment portfolio. And really quick, let me just jump in. Jackson mentioned IRA 401k for our non-American uh, listeners. Those are tax devices for American stuff. You have similar stuff in your country, I'm sure. I want to be clear. A 401k is not a type of investment, is a stamp on investment. So you can still have a 401k and put it in a crappy savings account. So a 401k is not an investment. You could take that 401k money and put it in lots of different investments. It's just a tax thing. So just for everyone out there, 401k and IRA individual retirement account just says you're not, you're going to get taxed differently on it, but you still have to put it in. I don't think you can do it on your mattress, but you still have to put it in a bank account or a, you can still put it in a various uh, sundry array of investments. Go ahead, Jackson. Yeah, <laughs> that, that that's very true. Um, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, I've, honestly, I haven't solidified on like any one thing that I've been wanting to push out into or just, you know, put my money into. Um, I did have a pretty strong portfolio prior to two years ago. And then uh, kind of COVID hit and we had an election cycle. And typically that's a good indicator of how it's going to perform. So I moved stuff out and that was a good move. But then still, I'm just ending up sitting on sitting on the money. And yeah, the problem is moved had to say, where? If you didn't yeah, move exactly. anywhere better, it's like, dude, what did I do? All right. So we are right out of time. Jackson's uh, got another heart out. Let me sum up. So hopefully you got the, the goal of this wasn't to be investment advice. It was to kind of pique your interest and go, holy crap, if I spent all of my time building a million dollar business that doesn't make any profit, I haven't really done it. If I spent all my time making a million dollar business that makes me $200,000 a year in profit, but I don't know how to keep that money and I end up broke, I really haven't done it. So because the name of the podcast is Grow My Cleaning Company, we, we talk a lot about how to grow a cleaning company. I want to deliver on that promise. But I don't know that we've really served you if we teach you how to grow a cleaning company, but don't teach you how to keep the freaking money and be wealthy. I think that's really what you want. So the feedback I want you to take away from is A, find a, 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 a investment counselor. B, do your own research. Like if any of this stuff I'm saying sounds like crap, Google that, figure it out. See if see what I'm saying is true and see what's not. C, it's really important to know where to put your, your money. And I'll, I'll give you some thoughts and more concepts. Again, I'm not an investment advisor, so I'm not going to buy, buy this mutual fund or buy this. I'll tell you what I do and why I do it. And then again, now is a great time to do your own research. So first, the big shift I want you to leave with, no matter what is shifting from income isn't everything. There are a lot of doctors that make 200 grand a year and die broke. They're a old, old book called, uh, I think we mentioned it in yesterday's call um, or podcast, uh, The Millionaire Mind and The um, Millionaire Next Door. Average millionaire that wasn't gifted it made like 50 grand a year, 40 grand a year. So wildly, your financial sex success has to do with what you do with the money that you earn, not how much money that you earn. Um, so in, increasing income is good, but we're not really in data. That's like top line sales. You can still do that and broke. You want to increase your profit, what you keep. So how do you do that? First and foremost, believe it or not, know what taxes look like, know what inflation looks like and have a plan and do something actively. That's the big one. I'll give you what I do. Take it for what it's worth. So for me, I like things that automatically go up with inflation. So I mentioned houses a lot. I like houses because really what I bought is a combination of permits and time and architecture and wood and steel and drywall and carpet. And as those all go up in, in, in their individual prices as a, as a whole, right? No one buys carpet to own carpet, unless you're a carpet wholesaler, you buy carpet to have a house. So as a whole of a house, it's kind of forced to go up. So a lot of times we go, wow, my house was worth, you know, 10 years ago, 300,000. Now it's worth 500,000, which is good. But believe it or not, most of the time you just kept up with inflation. The three, what you could buy with 300,000 10 years ago is typically about what you can buy with, um, $500,000 today. So it's more in dollars, but no one cares about dollars. We only care about buying power, right? What can I do with these dollars? So real estate is much, in my opinion, 
much better than a savings account, right? Because at least it's going to keep up with inflation. A savings account has nothing to do with inflation. You, inflation could be at 15% and they still give you 1%. Like, well, how am I supposed to, how am I supposed to live like this? You can't. So I do like real estate. Um, obviously in your own real estate, that's pretty easy because you need a place to live anyway. As opposed to paying rent, you can pay a mortgage and the government likes you to own it. They give you deductions with um, interest. So you can borrow that money and not have to pay tax on the interest that you spend, which is nice. Um, and then if you sell it after two years, there's no tax. There's a lot of tax benefit stuff for real estate. Um, so that's the first place I go. Um, Jackson mentioned cryptocurrency. Lately, I've been doing that um, just because I'm a big Bitcoin fan. They've only printed a certain amount and there'll never be any more Bitcoin. So it is a scarce thing that people want. As long as more people want it, then there is the availability. It will continue to go up in value. And I say that about anything in the world, right? And for those of you that have the same response, and we're going to wrap up, same response I did when I first heard about cryptocurrency. I'm like, well, that's just a Ponzi scheme, right? Like it doesn't even exist. What does it matter? <laughs> let me give you some, let me give you some shocking news and we'll end, we'll end with that. We'll end with a big shocker. Um, most of us, if I said, hey, we are in fiat currency, would go, I don't know what that means, but it sounds right. We are in fiat currency. All fiat means is it's completely made up. There's nothing back in it. So in the 70s and before, we were on the gold standard where you could say, here's a dollar, America, give me my give me my gold and you would trade it. Um, and again, for those of you that are into gold, I do like gold. That's a good thing for inflation. But historically, 99% of the world's gold has been seized by government. <laughs> We're going to take that and look that up, by the way. And I mean, historically over like the 5,000 of years, it's been a store of value, but people, and you're like, not in America. Oh yeah. America has made it illegal to own gold. Look that up too. Um, I think in the FDR uh, organization. So all that to say, Fiat money is only good because we all believe it's good. There's nothing backing it other than the full faith and confidence of the American government. So as long as we have faith and confidence in the American government, the fiat dollar is worth something. Um, if and when we all go, well, this is just a Ponzi scheme. And, they're, and that's how you've heard of countries like Venezuela and stuff. They just print more and more and more and more, right? Because it's a, the government can't stop. <laughs> they're like, everyone wants all these programs. They get elected to go, we'll give you everything. We'll give away money. But there is no money. So they have to print more money, which makes it less valuable and so on and so forth. And when that spins out of control, um, countries go out of business. Um, the average, I think, average lifespan of a fiat currency is like 40 years. So when the government goes off a standard where they can just print it out of nowhere, you, typically it's 40 years. I think our fiat has been in since like 1972. So we're coming up on 50 years, something like that. Um, so anyway, uh, when we talk about that, when you're looking at, well, you know, US dollar safe, I think it's safer than most of the dollars out there, maybe all the dollars out there but it's still not based on anything of value, right? Gold is only has value because we agree it has value and it's had value for 5,000 years. So it's a, it's a good bet. Um, but when you're on the fiat, it's off of nothing. So I want to encourage you like with real estate, at least it's a thing in the world that exists, right? It's not like we can all agree. I have real estate and someone probably wants to live in it with money. As long as Jackson thinks it's valuable and I think it's valuable, we can trade with it. But if Jackson stops thinking it's valuable, it's not, which should sound a lot like cryptocurrency, which is the case. As long as people think it's valuable, it is. The one difference or one of the main differences of cryptocurrency or at least Bitcoin, only 21 million will ever be printed. Uh, <laughs> they probably printed 20 million, $21 million of the government money in this podcast. <laughs> and when I say printed, I mean, it's a key. They don't even print it anymore, by the way. It's just, a, it doesn't even exist. There's, they call it M1 money supply dollars in the, in the world, M2 and M3 money supply dollars on a balance sheet somewhere that literally don't even exist. It's completely vapor. So people that are like, I'm not going to take some fake internet currency. You've been using a fake internet currency since the, <laughs> since the internet was born, baby. <laughs> so all that to say, do your own research, invest in things um, that are going to outpace inflation and focus on um, keeping your money, not just making it. All right, guys, gals, great episode. Jackson, thanks for hanging. Uh, if you want more, or if you're like, I thought this was the Grow My Cleaning Company, I would like to hear about that. We have episodes on that, growmycleaningcompany.com. Check it out there. Check it out now, and I'll see you there. Well, here we are at the end of the podcast and you made it. Great job. Uh, I've got a little bonus for you before for sticking through with me. But like I mentioned before, if you got value out of this podcast and you want to show a little love, subscribe, rate and review on iTunes, Spotify, wherever the heck you're listening to this thing, share with a friend, share the love. And as a special thank you for those of you that stuck with me to the end, how about I give you my personal phone number so we can text. It's a great way for me to get to know you, your business, your goals personally. So shoot me a text now, 602-932-6431. 602-932-6431. I am the only one who responds to these texts and I will personally respond to everyone I possibly can as long as uh, this number is manned. I uh, don't know how long we're going to keep this at the end of the podcast, so grab it now. 602-932-6431. Give me a text. Say hey. Can't wait to meet you.